Good day. It's now time to look at the papers and do an extens extensive discussion, you know, on mm. content of what the papers are saying. And uh, we'll start off with the daily graphic. And um, as expected, it says three South Africans deported by their lawyers say it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. That's a story captured by the daily graphic. Also it talks about Governor of Bank of Ghana takes a bow this week. And uh, the Ghanaian Times newspaper says three suspects deported and President charges appointees to promote development. Governor takes early bar after four-year tenure. That's the Ghanaian Times newspaper. Telegraph says, the General Telegraph says, Akufuada's three security trainees deported. And Omani Buama mocks NPP says, this year's election would be won based on achievements, ideas, and not violence. The BNFT says, fate of new NHIS subscribers hangs. A scheme faces 337 million funding gap. The Daily Guide newspaper says, um, NPP couples deported, family cries foul in South Africa. We'll do two more. I'll take, yeah, I'll try and mention them. Okay. The final newspaper says, lawyer, quote, uh, will pursue case to protect the integrity of the court, and that's uh, Nana Santi Bidu to or, uh, or on, the, on the front page of the final newspaper saying that 18 year old Abita meets uh, untimely death. Economy on track, prospect good, and that's from analysts. The Financial Post reports in that. My final one for the morning Akufuado, South African rebels, oh gosh, trainers deported. Uh, Interior Ministry and Immigration Service released detailed dossier on them. All right, so that's the Herald newspaper. My final for the morning. All right, so let me introduce uh, my guest for the morning, my extreme rights. We have a former uh, vice chair of the CPP joining us this morning, Madam Rhoda Ayana. Good morning to you and welcome Thank to the you. show. Right. Also, next to him is a former member of parliament for Adenta and a presidential staffer, Mr. Edward Sarri. Good morning to you. Good morning. And welcome to Thank the show you. as well. And then we have the deputy communications director of the New Patriotic Party, Mike Okwe Jr., lawyer, Mike Okwe Jr. Mike, good morning to you. Thank you very much. And welcome. Welcome to the show. Mm. Um, I, I, okay, I haven't heard him, but I would want to start off from Madam Ayana on the deportation of the um, <laughs> suspects, three suspects that we had in custody. Um, let me pick your thought. I mean, when you heard it, first of all, the Interior Ministry released a statement, extensive statement. We went through that. And just a few hours after, they deported. And everybody, I mean, completely, the country was taken aback by that. Yo, you? Um, good morning, Ghana. Um, for me, it wasn't surprising. Okay. Because I also thought that was the best thing to do. Okay. Um, I'm looking at a situation where something similar had happened before um, concerning um, the British Premier's son, Mark Thatcher, uh, and his um, company, the security company that had wanted to go to Equatorial Guinea sure. to launch that coup. Okay. And, you know, the best thing they did was to extradite. Sure. So for me, um, security and for that matter, peace is paramount for this year's elections. And I felt that if we needed to move on without speculations and all the other innuendos that were coming from both sides, then the best thing was just to let the people go, especially after the BNI had interrogated and done what they felt was the best. Mm -hmm. That was interrogate and then probably ask the immigration to look into it and let them go. Okay. Um, this, for me, was okay. But um, I think that this thing has opened up some other issues okay. because um, we had other things coming from the ruling government side. And I was appalled to read that a major retired Bwachijang had made a statement that the NDC was capable of marshalling a militant group within one hour, okay, because the NDC had the majority of retired Ghana army officers. For me, this was a very unfortunate statement. And I feel that coming from someone who has himself been a coup maker before was not tenable. And to think that I had nothing 
condemnation coming from the ruling party, I felt the jitters. Because if there's any one dangerous person in this country today, it's major retired Bwachijan. That's how I feel. Because if he is in a government, and that government has been confronted with a security issue concerning people who have come in, we are not sure what they are going to do. We are talking about terrorist activities around the world. And you can sit down and have a mindset that because your party has the majority of retired officers, then the probability that if anything happened, you can marshal then it means that you've been thinking about it all, all the time. It's not something that just came off. It's something that is in you. And I'm asking, so what would have happened if we went into the elections and assuming that the NDs, MPP won? Does it mean that Brachijang would have, you know, so marshaled? The, I mean, so you mean, I mean, it means that comments, of course, does not in any way, sh should not be justified, regardless of what the reasons are. That's it, it should not be justified. Okay. And then um, Kukwe Nido also comes in, and then he also talks about the fact that uh, Nanado would have been taking on. But it's not the MPP that's on trial here. It's not the MPP. It's three South Africans who found them, themselves into this country. We know that they were um, brought into this country by a group supposed to have come for particular training. Now the immigration service is telling us that this is not what they came to do. Fine. We have been told by uh, Mr. Kweku that he did not invite one of them, that he invited him somewhere last year. For me, that's neither here nor there. Okay. Because at the end of the story, you know, invitations, it depends how long your visa was given to you for. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, Mr. A. Edu, sorry. I want to, I mean, the comment, you know, when this started, I had many from political scientists, and I remember clearly Dr. Janapo saying that, look, the brouhaha, the speed with which, the anxiety, the uh, back and forth will end at naught. Nothing would come out of it. And this confirms that view. Well, I that indeed you had nothing against those men. You see, it, it's a uh, good morning to our viewers and uh, my co panelists. Um, I think this is a, a very serious country, and we have to take things serious in this country. It doesn't matter how big or small it looks like. Um, were we also, by what you just said, were we also expecting that we just you know, go around business as usual, and then a surprise is sprung on us, and then we all go helter skelter trying to, you know, reel under some kind of emergency in trying to look for a solution. Is that a kind of country we are reactive to, you know, issues when they happen and all of that? So I don't buy that school of thought. Okay. I think that whatever happened, if anybody thinks that it is all right for someone to enter any country and do anything they like, whether it is legal or whether they entered through legal uh, processes or not, I don't think that's a good. We all travel. I have traveled more than about 30 countries in, uh, in, in my life. And I don't know anywhere that I've been, apart from my own country, that I can just walk around and do things anyhow I please. Okay, that I will go into Togo, next door, Burkina, next door, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, next door, and I um, mean some uh, uh, hotel training somebody, I mean people, group of young people, and my uh, immigration status does not suggest that that is why I enter the country and so on. Okay. Please, we are not in some kind of banana state as uh, others may choose to call it. I think this issue, when this case went to court, charges were preferred against these people. Beyond all of that, the Immigration Service has certain aspects of the law that supports what uh, the, the decision to deport these people. And for me, the matter rests there. If at the end of the day, they can come back through the proper channels, they have not been banished from coming to uh, Ghana. Um, an, an aspect of their entry is in question as of now, for which reason they've been deported. For me, matter ends there. The other issues that had to do with the NPP uh, invitation and all those other ones, I think that NPP is not a separatist state. They should know that. They should also learn to respect the institutions 
that we have, uh, the state institutions as we have them now. God forbid, though, should Nanado win elections? Is he going to set up a new police administration? Oh. No, 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 wait a moment, wait a moment, wait a moment, wait a moment. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Is he going to uh, like retire all the police service as we have it now and set up a new one? For which reason they say they are not so sure about the security we have in place, so they have to train somebody or some group of people to protect Nanado and all of that. I think we cannot start or we cannot, uh, uh, you know, live in a country like that. This is what we have. Let's learn to, 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 yeah, he's a lawyer. He has uh, Michael Kwe and Co, who are astute lawyers around him. We should tell him what the right thing is and let him follow it. But this semblance of, we are not too, we are not too sure whether these, this police can protect us and all, it doesn't engender the trust that we, we have to repose with these people. But that is all we have. We cannot change the constitution of this country overnight. So the MPP should get that, so that we all, and the fact that we have to decouple the state from government, there's a thin line there. So if BNI, which is a state institution, is undertaking an, in, an investigation, sure. and we will be made to, because there's a government in power, and that government is, uh, from there's a party if that is in government I should put it and for that matter whatever spokes uh, in releases that will come from the state institution certainly has some government official releasing it and all of that at what point do we draw the line from the state institution vis-a-vis -vis, um, the, the government do you understand there can never be that moment in time where government will not be uh, uh, executing whatever the state uh, institutions are putting out there. So we should learn to understand that for as long as we live, these things will happen. So I am not surprised somehow the way the MPP took it. We are in an election year. They want to make capital out of every station that comes. And I want, I want us to, this chapter, I believe, we should move on. Let all learn the lessons out of this and live as a peaceful nation. For me, that's what I'll say for okay. now. Okay, but um, just, just a quick one before I come to Michael Coy, that when, when something happens, and you're talking about state institutions, right, and the, the very institutions aren't speaking to the issues because they will have, the fact they have the expertise, and you have party activists, uh, <coughs> government officials speaking to it, obviously it will be hard for people just to decouple it, and it will be hard for people to say it is not politicized. How has it always been? Government has a communication ministry, which communicates all, um, what do you call it, all communications from government comes from that ministry. So why, sh if a state institution is supposed to deliver a communication out there, where would it have to come from? That's what it is. But why can't those institutions speak for itself? I mean, when it came to... How many just, times me, have uh, you heard DNI? Okay. Let, me take you, let, me take, let me take you back to pre what President Muhammad said mm. some time back, mm. right? When it came to the power issue, mm. President Muhammad kept making promises that he couldn't fulfill. Mm. And then it got to a point he said he's not going to talk. He would allow the expert to talk. Mm. Because there was a reason why. Because mm -hmm. he kept missing it. Mm -hmm. He kept because he didn't have the knowledge. The experts were from where? Oh, they're Ghanaians. They're people, they're are, they are power, uh, energy experts. Yes. yes. The energy department, the energy ministry has... Uh, Technocrats. The PR department also. They had people who spoke for them. And I, I don't remember the gentleman. Is it Bawa or something? Somebody. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah. He, he spoke with He speaks for them. So if Bawa comes out to speak, there's a department in the energy ministry that speaks. So I don't see where the problem is or okay. where that example, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't fit in here. All I'm saying is that the BNI is an investigative body. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we all know since when? Since history, I'm not too old. Some of you are <laughs> much older. But I have never, I've never heard any BNI statement like that. Never. Because their kind of operations do not give them that, uh, whatever, to co interact that much with 
the public. That's so why they, they, they leaked <coughs> the information. You will call it leak, but it was published okay. by and there's an official, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, aspect of whatever came out officially. And let's deal with whatever was official, not not what sources, sources or whatsoever. Journalists have right. to do their work, okay. and when they do, we should know when to credit them for their work. And let's also resign ourselves to what is official okay. for for so far an official statement has been made from the yes. ministry of interior, interior and i think we should stick with that all right thank yeah. you very much uh, mr Ma Ma uh, yeah lawyer michael Quay. uh let me let me just pick your thoughts on you know the deportation i know yesterday i heard attach and speak extensively on how it's an insult to our democracy makes mockery of our system w what's your own thoughts on that yes uh first of all there are so many dimensions to this thing that we could spend the whole day so it's obviously for yeah on this whole issue especially climaxing with the deportation but i want to hit it point by point very quickly sure great first question what law did they break what law did the people break because if it's to do with the immigration issue then that alone which of course arose from the charge from the unlawful training and so on, which they could not sustain, which I'm about to show you, <laughs> was simply because they had to try and find a red herring. Look, when you are going to a country and you say you are going to do business and your business is journalism, and as you go to the country, you talk to one or two figures, record it and bring it to your country. Is that a crime? Two, these are also Africans. Today we have in our country all Africans coming to Ghana, visa on arrival. On arrival. <clears throat> when I went to Nigeria, I met a client. I discussed the contract. The contract was signed. Meanwhile, I went for a wedding. Do you understand? These people stated that they have gone on business. What is their business? Security. And what was the training they were doing? We're coming to that. Now, because they themselves they didn't know what they were doing, <laughs> they charge them under criminal offenses act yeah under unlawful training now let us just hear what unlawful training says because you see these days we are not going to do that general propaganda talk <laughs> where three or more persons okay uh -huh. meet uh -huh. or are together for the purposes of military training without permission of president authorized person each of them commits a misdemeanor Okay. So let's look at the factors. First one is to do with the military training. Second one what's, is to what's do What's military training? Tension. I was coming to that. Military training is combat. And it said even in the newspaper that it was non combative training. Then it came to the issue of weapons. Madam, are you aware that these people who are supposed to be legal, after applying for the visa bus uh, 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 business visa, they actually brought all the materials to Ghana? And they signed for them officially. Madam, do you know that? Are you aware? <laughs> yeah, I'm listening. No, I'm just asking. Are you aware? No, I'm not aware. Have you ever, I'm aware. I, no, I've heard of it, but Thank not you. official. Well, not official. Official. They not signed official. it. Not yes, official. No, you That's what, official. No, not official. But officially, it was signed for. And the items were recorded. All the things we're bringing, including plastic knife and plastic gun. Have you ever seen a terrorist or a mercenary claim <laughs> their things at the port before? No, have you seen it before? Okay. Now, this is how the non-combative works. It's teaching them, first of all, fitness drills, but most I, importantly, I know, I know that yes, crowd of... control and close body protection. One of the aspects of close body protection is to disarm somebody who is approaching with a weapon. They did not do any firing of arms. They did not do any training of arms, and there were no arms found on them. They, as South Africans, they could have found kitchen knives here to show them, <laughs> but because they are professional, they brought all the materials. So, for example, if somebody is going to do this, they show you, hold the hand, twist it like this, and take the knife off. Nana Kufadu Baumia, free. Do you understand? So, I'm surprised <laughs> that anybody will say that we training our security people for non combative and armed situation is wrong. Look, madam, let me tell you this for a fact. MPP, last election, we had a situation where there was a, a, a whole collapse of a stage of our flag bearer. We saw it. You like remember? Television. Okay. Yes. And there was, oh, this was sabotage. That was that all the innuendo, the rumors. 
You remember Dr. Baumia driving just on a campaign trail from a certain destination. Two tires burst at the same time <laughs> in a way that was suspicious. Express even said two tires. We don't want any of them. We said, look, uh, JB Dankwa, he has been killed today because he didn't have security in his house. Up to today, one minute they told us that him and two other people, the next minute he was taken to BNI, he came out, they say it's only him. Nobody else. Nobody sent him. He went for mobile phone. Under these circumstances, we are saying that we are allowed by law again, when you look at the legislative instrument, 1571 of this country, you are allowed to have private security from banks to personal human beings. I have private security in my house. I have a private security in my house with a licensed weapon. Ask my brother, do I say that's criminal? And even another people just, were not yeah, going for, for, yes, they were not going for with weapons. They are learning how to defend Nanado. Then you know that towards the election, they will give us police security. We have always taken it. But one police security towards the election is not enough for high profile people like Nanado and Baumia. They can come to harm any day. Okay. Sports people up. like one even Steffi Graf and minute. all of that have been stopped. Be stopped. So when I hear all of this, that they don't understand what is going on. My question is this. NDC, where is the harm? Look, he told us that we should look at uh, 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 official sources and uh, uh, Banana Republic and all of that kind of stuff. I don't buy it. I believe that the interior minister himself did an injustice to this country. Madam, let me show you this. You know, Captain Koda, this yes. was written about him. Two main points. One, it says that as a young officer, Captain Koda was involved in AFRC regime, following accusations of corruption. Yes, yeah. he was convicted and incarcerated. But you see, the facts are this, and Nana to his lawyer, has brought them out for public, which sure, I'll repeat sure. for sure. the benefit of your viewers. It says here, that's Captain Koda, and other members of the team were accused of having embezzled funds and were tried twice on the same charges by the people's court on both occasions captain koda was acquitted and discharged sure. then he goes on to refer to an official francois commission headed by appeal court judge justice francois where squadron leader Degbe, the president of the people's court admitted that captain koda had been acquitted and discharged at the trial on charges of embezzlement official sure. so why would interior minister come and give us so-called official document and create this falsehood and alarm to try and say that somebody is this or somebody is that. Then my brother is talking about this by Banana Republic. When you do that, it's rather a contemporary republic, <laughs> not Banana Republic. <laughs> you, you are not allowed to do that. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Ask him if he broke jail. Somebody yeah, can be incarcerated wrongly. Why? During AFRC, AFRC, how many people were locked just because they went to chase I somebody's girlfriend? Did he break jail? You don't know that? It was you don't know. Who tell me? You don't know people were locked in I Ghana said, did he break during jail? your antecedents did he for break chasing jail? somebody's girlfriend. You don't know that? <laughs> did he break jail? <laughs> please, the fact that somebody's in jail so, doesn't give you. have to wrap up. Wrap so, up. Please yes. wrap up. Wrap so, just, time. yes. Wrap up. Wrap up. Exactly. So, yeah, you need to, as I said, yes, contemporary public, you say official resources. Please. Don't go there. Then they tell us that. Yes. Uh, Mr. Ofusu Oh, <laughs> I'll wrap up for you. <laughs> that, oh, in this contemporary state. And when you do this kind of behavior in this country, I told Mr. Manibua, my doctor, yesterday morning on Metro TV, I said, you know where your shame went? You just end up deporting these people without any charge. Because none of the charges will stick. This 189 with military and all of that. As soon as they went to court, the judge looked at it. You know what the judge said? You have brought them here with misdemeanor. After all the noise of terrorists and mercenary, you charge them on misdemeanor, which I'm attracts sure a fine. I'm not sure a judge, eh? a judge oh, I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> I'm not sure a judge. <laughs> uh, uh, see, the judge was. Don't, don't, okay. mis, don't yeah. mislead let, let me say, the public. Let, okay. Don't let me say the, the judge was surprised. I was just a lawyer. I, you don't, I don't think a judge oh. will open stop, his mouth stop and say that. Stop no, 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 no. It's wrong. No judge will say that. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. No judge will say that. Let me rephrase it. I'm saying that the judge said he was surprised it was just a misdemeanor. But let me add. I'll add to embellish it. That after all the imagine? terrorism, <laughs> yes, after all the terrorism <laughs> eh, and mercenaries, Madam, yes, I'll embellish it. 
Madam, can you imagine that after all these Look, big he's charges? Look, all the time. Oh, please. No, one, it's, 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 he's, he's it's already important I've already given it. Yeah. After yeah. all these huge charges yeah. of yeah. mercenary, yeah. yes, and terrorism, then you went to charge them with misdemeanor? That attracts a fine and a slap on the wrist? Okay. Is that what you ended up doing? Right. Please. Thank you. It is a red herring. They know they failed in the economy. They know they went to bring the Gitmo to and were thank telling you, them about Michael that. Kajini. So they tried to change. I mean, so these are thank, all you, thank you, Michael Kajini. Madam Sasha has a question to ask. I'm very yeah. ready. To about it. I wanted to find out from yes. what we read yes. um, that they had profiling of, of the, the STL. The STL. Yes. Why would you come to train people and have profiling? And apart from that, I'd also want to ask you, do you think that it's prudent <coughs> for the BNI to come out and state categorically that this is what they told us? You know, whatever they told the BNI, we are not privy to. The interior we are only reading. reading. No, no, I already talked about it. I already us. mentioned, I already mentioned no, that. Oh, the the was was the borders, that was borders on, on, on state security. There is no way they are going to come out public. Have you read the interior minister's statement? No, it doesn't matter. I, I, I haven't read it. Right. No, I, no, I, have I, have, I have read part read of it. I have read part of it. But what I'm saying is that when when something borders on state security, definitely the BNI is not going to publish it for everybody to read. So based on that, that could have you know, prompted them to deport them, sure. to let sleeping dogs lie. That's mm. my, my position. That's how I and see my position it. But I want to know from yes. you why they had the profiling yes. of Thank those you. people. My position is simple. You are not allowed by law, whether state security or not, because these are the same people who are telling us to give powers of interception of our phone calls to national security to hold anybody for more than 48 hours. They did it for 96 hours. So they have no justification to come and tell me that they know something that they won't tell us. Because the interior minister put everything there. Secondly, if me, I want to do an investigation on TV3 as a private investigator, I'm allowed to have all the uh, profile of Bridget and whoever is here. So There's what, nothing wrong with having that as a private so what was interest? So what wait, 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 wait. One moment. What was the interest in? Interest? We were interested in profiling STL. Hmm. It's a different hmm. matter. But I want to go hmm. even to the details of it. <laughs> Madam, do you know that the interior minister has told us here that STL are the ones who transmit electronic results for the EC? Do you remember Dr. Ferijan telling us that the EC has never asked STL to do any transmission for them? These are some of the reasons why we want to bring out a written document on STL in terms of the work they've been doing for the EC that we have been talking about that nobody wants to believe. Okay. But you but, see, God is so good. But the part about profiling, profiling, no, no, profiling. No, no, no. Yeah. Profiling. profiling we, we won't wait. Yeah, we, 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 are, we are bringing the names, their roles so in the company, they are and their duties. To... They are not vulnerable to anything. They are vulnerable we want to write. You read, you read, no, no, you read. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You are not, you are not, you are not understanding me. No, no. What Somebody can understand? take something and twist the it. The motive is wrong. Like no, the motive is not. The motive no, because, I, I have to move on. No, no, because, because what has come out? The motive is wrong. Wait, what has come out? You see, I, I, the interior minister has not told us that, today that, that STL has been transmitting results from the EC. Why is it that? Isn't this dangerous? Why is it that your partner? Isn't, madam, aren't you surprised? One, please. That Afarijan told us something, but yet interior minister is telling us something different. Thank you. Michael, okay, thank you. Shocked. Edu, sir, you make the final submission. We'll move on. Yes, come on. There's one thing the MPP should try to cleanse itself of. Do you understand? Every now and then, there's no need to attack. surround. The no, no, no. Bring surround the themselves with questionable characters. L oh. Okay, I, I mean, this is somebody who broke jail. We all know. No, no, no. Please, 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 you know. please. But Jerry Rollins, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, Jerry yeah. Rollins. No, no. So okay. say so. I am saying mine. So whatever oh. you have Can you say, say it. <laughs> no, what should I no, say? Mike, for you? Mike, one moment. I beg you. Mike. I'm saying. Mike, you should Sometimes when you have people, when you have people whose whose character. Is questionable. Okay. Like like who? Of course, Tanado. Every now and then, people are. Tanado broke jail. He didn't break jail. Yes. He has this man as his head of security, and this is somebody who has. So Tanado must cut his face. A lot of people will have. I said their... this is the head of Tanado security. Who is a jailbreaker? That is my point. Ah, okay. You also have uh, 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 what's his name? <laughs> Who? Major Boachi Jan retired. Uh, uh, he, bro he broke jail. He made coup. <laughs> it's a questionable character. <laughs> he broke jail. See, so for me, I think that if people should, instead of, you know, smelling red herrings and trying to <laughs> do what people want to see of you, to cleanse your image. Because Ghanaians, some Ghanaians, I will say, think that that posture, violence here, 2012 elections, run up to it, 
all kinds of posture where you know self defense is not violent. Self defense. Self defense is not violent. Why all that be that is all that be that is self defense. Self defense. Wow. Because we're beating it. Uh -huh. no, you were no. beating or you no, beat no, people. No, no, no. That's no, not what you said. Bro, you said no. You said to be yet 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 to be it's no, hanging, hanging around your yeah, right. the leader of your party and the people around him. You understand? So that posture, the antecedents of that posture is what is creating anxiety in people's minds when they see things like this around you. Really? That is it. Yes. Okay, that takes us to our next topic, actually. And it's coming from Minister of uh, Information, Dr. Omani Buama. He says, um, the Minister for Communications, Dr. Edward Omani Buama, has stated that this year's general elections would not be won on the basis of violence <coughs> and other acts that have the potential to jeopardize the nation's future. Now, I'd like to say that, quote, I'm quoting him, says, um, uh, I would, I'd like to say that this year's election is not going to be won based on paramilitary violence or any other actions that have the potential to destabilize the peace and stability of this nation. Coming from the uh, Minister of Communication, I mean, why make such a statement? <laughs> how, how is the uh, NPV campaign non-violence? How, how, how is that? Oh, you see, we have just spoken. This early first topic we dealt with has a lot to do with the posture right. of the political party, uh, 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 the NPP, let me put it this way. Uh, before they run up to this election, as I said, every election year, that is where you hear antecedents that we've had. You, one of them, well, somebody will go and on a tape say, we will use Wama Flu here. Someone will go and say, <laughs> Afghanistan somewhere. And then the flag bearer himself goes to say this all die be die thing. And then here we are. That's seven so months dated. to election. Mm -hmm. Okay, seven months to election. We are talking about training people. And they have tried to water down the the effect of uh, but I gave you a simple example that if I decide to go to another country, Mike was saying earlier on that these people came in, they, they went through immigration, their training equipment were let me tell you, they did all of this in the name of a security company, which is registered. So certainly, those, that security company has the, uh, what do you call it, right to import equipment and so on. But then, as to whether those equipment will be used for its purpose, it's another matter. Okay. So if, you, the, if, if the security, licensed security company was used as the res, uh, addressee, and they receive the items. It is right. It is proper. They went through the proper channel. But we are talking about how 15 people are being trained. And you listed the uh, kind of training we are talking about here. And they, in one of the list was military, whatever. I've forgotten the, hmm? the expression they use. I so I know drill. Something drill. Military, military drill. drill. No, no, what no is it wasn't military drill. Something drill. What, yeah, I, I think that's it. Something and there was. Drill. There was combat, combat uh, non, 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 something, non, 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 yeah, non combative, something, yes. weapon handling. Yes, weapon handling is the one you, you added, which is wrong. You understand? And for me, I think that plastic weapon is not happening. Whatever you call uh, plastic, is you see, you see, you plastic see, weapon is, you see, you don't buy a toy toy You see, no, oh, no, see, no, I mean, see, I'm afraid of toy You see, oh, this is what I'm saying that somebody said, Woma flu. Woma flu doesn't require a license. So get it and club anybody. There was a time another person also sat on radio from MPP or TV and said that they're declaring war against certain uh, 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 tribes in this country from the same party. So I'm talking about antecedents that uh, suggest that this party, whenever it, uh, we're heading close to an election, this is a posture they take. Okay. And they want to always, you know, exert some posture that people will be afraid of them. And here we are talking about, people are going to look at your track record, the message of your party. So far, what is the NPP doing? Going around and one moment they said uh, some school doesn't have chairs and then Dr. Abhi, he seems to be the only person on the campaign trail right now. The flag bearer, you can't even see him okay, around. All right. Thank you. So the next one, he had two minutes, so you have two minutes. But I want Madam Ayana <laughs> to comment on it. Do, 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 do you think the NPP... No, two. I, I, I looked at my watch. Okay. Um, <laughs> do you think the NPP has actually earned, uh, done things for people to have that perception that you know, they are treading on a violent path, or you think it's blown out of proportion? 
Uh, Bridget, I think is blown out of proportion. Great. I think that um, all political parties, you know, go out there with their different ways of campaigning. Um, if we are going to talk about violence, we could go ahead and mention so many other Example. things, examples. Um, what I expect of this election, according to Amoni Buama, is for us to go out there campaigning on issues. That's the vice president. Vice president, sure. okay. So campaigning on issues, being transparent, um, a level playing field. We don't expect state media to give the ruling party only the coverage. We expect that everyone will go out there thinking Ghana first as a patriot and not go out there to create anything that will mar the peace that we are enjoying now. So for me, um, I don't think there's any political party that can say that it's more violent than the other. Okay. It, sure. Oh, no, no, I don't. I don't because, um, you know... But it's the management of the problem. It's, it's the management of the problem. And I also say that sometimes it depends who says it's the loudest. Okay. So people get to hear. But there's so many things that happen and nobody talks about it. <laughs> you know, so it, it's who says it the loudest. All right. Mike, your two minutes. Yes. Uh, thank you. Why, why are you so insistent <laughs> on two minutes? Why? Because well, you run on the two, your time so, all the time. Now, quickly, looking so, at this issue of level playing field, yeah, as sure. um, my sister uh, from the CPP has said, is the issue. Do you remember that recently the MPP headquarters was raided? The person who was caught has said openly in court that he went and recruited other men in Ghana, gave them military uniforms, gave them military guns. We don't know where he got them from. This kind of person who was rather doing military training, he was giving bail, and up to now, we still don't know what is happening with the case. You are a very interested party, so you should. The very interested party. Nothing's happening. This person is an MPP. Nothing he's is happening. NPP person. Please, please. It's no, not so true. Add that. It's not true. He's a this person. No, NPP no, no. Person. This person was no, no, no. Card bearing. Please. Anybody he has can said go. Oh, that on air. You, 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 you have to you check. You saw it. If no. you can't check him, maybe put that no, fact out. Put that it's fact funny. out. Don't change it. Have you finished? Yes. Yes. That man is a known NDC member in that one. Who takes an NDC card? He takes an NDC card like he takes the military. Oh, but uh, Edward Sai no, is no, no, no. Unless you want to encourage him. No, I'm sorry. So I'm please sorry, control him. Made us laugh. No, you control him because I'm about I'm to give you more information. No. Uh -huh. This is below the belt, now, man. Now, this man, fake MPP card, fake military. Oh, God. Where's the surprise? There's no proof. This guy is proving a NDC member. He's known in Dansuman to be NDC member. Mike, 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 he was Mike, a former Mike, Kedar. Mike, Madam, Mike, no, no, do you know that Mike, former Kedars were... Mike, oh, don't misinform Please, people you can't do this on the program. Please, don't misinform You can't do this. Mike. <laughs> no, but you can't control him. What's going on? Don't misinform me. You're talking to me. He's the one making the interruption. Talk to him. Just a moment. Just I need to relax. I'm coming to fire more. So you're not firing. You're not You are on the wrong path. Okay, Mike, 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 it is known to the public that the man is an NDC member. It is known to the public that that man faked the MPP card and faked the military uniform. It is known to the public. Now, moving on onto that issue, he talks about all die be die. We went into an election. Dambotre was driven out of the police station. Nano Hininto was punched on the nose and bleeding. And Nanado said, defend yourself. Madam, do you know this criminal code here? Even when you kill somebody, murder, self-defense is a defense. Yes. You are entitled to defend yourself in this country, Ghana. So, Nanado says, hey, no more non-defense. In fact, in Itiwa, we be defend them Because we stood our ground. We are not going to be women anymore. <laughs> the NDC will always be the aggressors and we will be beaten up. So are you what is wrong proud with that? of that statement? No. I'm proud of being a self-defender. No, I'm you. proud of all that. So, no, that no, no. I'm proud that my leader will no, no, tell me to defend answer. myself. How that now, are you proud do of Do you it? know that words have no meaning except in the context in which they are used? Yes. I don't know who his English teacher was. <laughs> now, my English teacher was Martin Ejay. Yeah. And he told me that you what? can even tell somebody, he would hey, have Bridget, Ghana, you fool, if, you know what that means? 
it could be funny or stupid sure depending on the context sure. but since his english teacher may have died early <laughs> he thinks that every word no used it means the same thing it, 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 please english, please english, please it, wait oh it doesn't feel why are you panicking wait okay. let me finish no 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 mr edward 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 i think you can you should take hold on i think you should take his comments in the context of saying no no i'm fine all i'm saying is because i mean i get it you can take it out of context he is a lawyer so he has to always take it out of english language to survive he likes <laughs> propaganda. My, pro my profession no. doesn't need English no. to no. what, what is all I, said, I, I also want to say something to you. Mr. Duan, sorry. You know, he had only two minutes, but yeah. right now, because of the interjection, oh, we've gone about four minutes. Yes. Thank you. So oh, just so so another now minute. moving on to the issue of Kennedy. <laughs> sure. I'm surprised a former mm. member of parliament mm. does not respect our courts. Look. Mm. When Ken went to court, mm. you know they charged him with treason. Mm. They say he say you kill my people, guns, you kill mm. Ewes. Mm. When he went to court, they played the tape. Mm. He doesn't know. Do you know if is a prefix. Oh, if no, you put I, I if, get, get yes, for a conditional threat, it's not a threat. Mm. You say, if you hit me, mm. I will hit you back. If you are going to be killing and hitting uh, uh, accounts in Ododiodio, then we will also attack you in Ododiodio. We will attack you, whether you are gone or away. When they went to court, they just said, no. This is set. Obiye seya, may you see. That is conditional threat. And he was freed. No yeah. treason. Yet, and a former That's member okay. of parliament will come and sit here and say, and somebody said you will kill other tribes, but yeah. you never had the say. Because the person was saying it in a certain context. Once again, failure in English. Okay. They won't let. <laughs> now, Mike, okay. no, wait, no, 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 no. You see, now, Did you now, hear I now, now, wait. You, Did you hear, you I hear when President, President Mills said, if and that's why we, we always like to add it here. I like you. Declare war to that if that there's no fairness, oh, stop this. Mike, you have to wrap up now. Thank Please wrap up. Thank Mills. you very much. Please wrap he up. He said, if yeah. the EC does not do so, so, and so, Ghana will become like Kenya. Did he not say it? The President Mills not give a I conditional said, Kenya. I declare and in Kenya, war. What Madam, about let that? me tell you. They were not singing Kumbaya, my lord. All right, so time up for head. Michael Koy. And, and, time and up, time up. There's the last one. It's here in When he went to wear that <laughs> no. wall dress to eat, you think he was going to dance for Fajan? You are a hypocrite. And you people come but and sit here. But he still wears it on the campaign trail. No, man, no, 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 that one. Hey, that one, a quarter. Eh. I see, I know that. Yes. So I know what you're so talking about. So don't behave like this as if you are holier than thou. Yes. My, um, you see, no, I, just you a see, minute, please. Because, see, just a minute. This, this, this friend of mine, brother, is, is, is shocking all of us on TV this morning. I am saying that Nanado said all die be die and went back. In what context? Please, please, please. If he thought it was a good statement to make, he wouldn't go back that people should forgive him for such statements. Because, if it, because, because people have misconstrued. You see, people have misconstrued what? You see, I'm also saying that this guy thinks he speaks very good English. I am I not too understand. good at English. That's why. But if somebody <laughs> says, I declare war, yeah, yeah. I don't know what, whether there's a condition to that. You declare war who? Hey. You didn't you hear that. You declare war. I am not. Listen, listen. I will listen, listen. declare war on anybody who attacks my children. Listen. If you are an armed robber, you come to listen, my house, I will listen. declare war you on see, you. see, for me, so we are not, we use are not, the context in which you are saying. All I'm saying is that the problem with this uh, violent posture. Oh, are you who is oh, more violent than NDC? The, 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 the violent, violent, so now you're the, telling me I should stop. The no, violent tag that has been given to you. You started that the you are trying to repel. NDC was fed on breast milk. Okay. Okay. Breast milk or violence. Fine. Mike, I That's think, not I think, the now, now you're going to be Now you're stopping me. No, no, no. No, no, no. Why is it that you're going to be No, both of you. Oh, no. I said the same thing. I remember. No, no, no. Let me talk to you. Ghana is watching. I know. That's what I'm saying. Ghana is watching their violence. The two of you are showing Ghana that you're both violent people. You know what? You know, if both of you talk at the same time, nobody actually hears it. So advise him that way. You told me that earlier and I kept quiet. Oh, yes, please. I know. And I'm saying, I'm, wait, that's what I'm telling you. After a while, so me to let me do you for a while so that you feel it. That's his fairness. Uh -huh. That's his fairness. With this day, so I'm not going to play it to you. Okay, you do you. me, I do you. Man, no go vex. You see, uh -huh. I'm talking yes. about antecedents. So is that your campaign song? Yes, yes. Well, you do me, I do you. Man, yes. no, man no go vex. So don't do me. own backyard sure. as a party. In the last six to eight months, we know what has happened there. The cudgels that have been used to smash people's windscreens, the, the, the way you've hounded your own party Has chairman. Has this happened in the NDC? Oh, come on, please, please. In allow, NDC, allow, has it not happened? Allow, allow. Is that Mike, what Mike, you are going Mike, to do here? Mike, Mike, okay, Mike, your party Mike. is in tatters when it comes to, you know, matters of sanity. People are, have been brutalized, blood has spilled in your uh, party 
headquarters. <laughs> you know, people are being swept out with brooms and all of that. This is in this no country. All right? Uh, so if people are tagging you with violence, they are not only blowing hot air. They know the antecedents. They know your character. They know the DNA. They know the intravenous <laughs> infusion. Thank you. That characterize that character of violence. All right. So we are saying that the Ghanaians don't deserve that, 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 that system that you guys have given to yourself. Ghanaians want to see, as Madam said earlier, what the evidence-based uh, uh, projects that we have sworn to, or let me say, uh, 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 Why signed... Why you can't say it. No, 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 say no, 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 The social contract that we have signed. Okay. The water that we've produced. Uh, in Adenta, I live there. Madam also lived there. Please, <laughs> when I came there in 2008, water was a big deal. Today, as we speak, go to Adenta, Water is flowing right. and it's Thank environs. You. Thank you. Go Thank around you. the streets We're of moving Ghana, away from this all over the place. <laughs> so you. this is what we are mm. expecting. We took water to well, Tamale. We, so so you are not only at the We did the whole of Tamale. Uh, are, which one is bigger? Oh, we are we are yes. expecting yes. the MPP to come up with <laughs> facts and figures. Every yeah. figure they throw out yeah. is a lie. No, Dr. Baumia is going about thirty-seven billion, thirty-seven billion. It's been corrected. Actually, I'm going to move the conversation away from this. I am going to ask. Let's go to Yes, no, I'm not getting to the economy. I'm going to ask you specific questions, and please, you stick to that. I want to start from you, Madam. I know the for CPP. I mean, I. Green Street's your presidential candidate. The Green Ghana, he wants green to green Ghana. Ghana. Our vice president has made a statement that we should campaign on issues, right? Yes. So I want to ask you, what are the issues that you're campaigning on? Your party's campaigning on? We'll um, to, for uh, Mike us, and then he will wrap up. Yeah. Um, we're going to look at <laughs> employment, the creation okay. of job opportunities for the youth. We're going to look at our health sector. Um, not just the building of hospitals, but making sure that they are equipped, well equipped, making sure that we have well trained <coughs> personnel. Okay. We're going to look <coughs> at energy, which for us um, we have not handled well because we believe that we have so much we could do in terms of solar for smallholder um, um, industries and also at least for the rural areas. Okay to release some for major uh, uh, manufacturing firms. Okay. So these are some of the things. But above everything else, when you hear Green Ghana, it means our major focus is going to be on agriculture. Because for us, we believe that the whole system of agri is what is going to move this country forward. Because once you're able to grow what you eat and eat what you grow and process okay. and export, it means that you're going to generate employment for lots of people. At the end of the day, the majority of Ghanaians are peasant farmers in the rural areas. And if you give them the opportunity to be able to maximize whatever they produce on their farms, not thinking about GMO, you understand? Because GMO in certain aspects can be good, but at the same time, it can impoverish our farmers. Okay. Those are the things we are going to be looking at. Thank you. So you've heard the CPP now. The NPP is very critical I mean, <coughs> of the government. I mean, criticism, you know, you've pointed out, you know, well, how, you, I mean, agriculture, 0.04, not good enough. Um, you've talked about corruption. So what are the main drivers of your campaign? Yes, uh, first of all, we would want to start with the <laughs> economy. Sure. Because we feel that the fundamentals of any country strong and vibrant economy. We are going to slash inflation and we are going to do this in a very radical way. We are going to deal with growth, which as you know, we left it at 8% and now it's around 4%, even with oil, a total disgrace. We have a situation where our interest rate is horrible in the 30s, which we left in the mid 20s, in fact 23%. We want to make sure that all these things, especially things like debt to GDP, which is now 74%, and the last time was 70.9, now moving to 74%, is totally unacceptable because that represents hippic proportions. Then we are going to look at the next most important thing, job creation. Okay. Job creation can only be attained by doing one thing, making sure that our raw materials are processed to the next level whether it's cocoa for example 
we're going to have our processing and so on to the next level. There are certain things that I am not necessarily allowed to even talk about in terms of the detail. Sure. But we know that we are going to do that in terms of to transform the economy. We must go on to transform it by processing our raw materials, timber, to the next level because you know it gives value addition. So that's the first thing. Now this would also create jobs and this will create also businesses. You know, for example, in our time we created very big businesses like um, RLG, Zoom Lion and so on and so forth. We want to go on to create more Ghanaian entrepreneurs because we believe that they will be able to employ people. We'll also get of the IMF because they are limiting us in terms of employment. If we go to the IMF, it will be to take money to work in the economy, not as a bailout. Because we bail out, then they give you conditions okay. that you have to follow. The NHIS, for example, we're going to make sure that the payments are made in such a way that we won't have the constant threats which we've had that today I'm closing, tomorrow I'm closing. A lot of Ghanaians are going there and they can't find it. Energy, in particular, is an area that we're going to focus on. As you know, apart from Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the other biggest uh, 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 project that came into the country was a Buidam. And we are going to even look at opportunities to build even bigger and better projects because it is not just about bringing in the energy, but also efficiency, environmentally friendly, and most importantly, cheaper. Okay. These are the aspects that we'll be looking at. So we feel that in a nutshell, we want to bring a situation where the Ghanaian economy okay, will be more vibrant and then we'll be able to move things even up to the next level. Okay. The end is, and I remember <coughs> asking President Mahama Sim the, the question about you know, what would be the drivers of the 2016 campaign, and he says it will be evidence based. Um, so, it's, is it, would, would it be just you're know, making references to what you've already built? What, what, what more can, are you going well, to offer uh, audience? You see, when someone makes a promise to you, first you have to Look at what I'm sorry, you have just one minute. Then we'll oh come my Don't goodness, worry. why he had like seven minutes? It doesn't minutes. matter. Oh, he didn't have seven, he had two minutes. Please, no. thank you. No, you can't I'm, be so, I'm sorry. Next time, I'll do that. Next time, I'll be unfair to him and I'll be fair to you. I'm sorry, right. life is like that. Sorry, you know, <laughs> when uh, someone says, I'll cut a castle of a mount to ma, yes, it is indeed. You understand, in the opposite direction, if someone says they will give do something, first look at what he's done, sure. and then that can make you project whether the person is telling you the truth. And that's what President Mama means by evidence-based. This is what we've done so far. We have shown you in terms of housing. I always say that the NPP till today, they don't know where that one house they completed is. One house, one. There's none. We have evidence. Sang did, 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 sang but did you realize when he was talking, he didn't really make references to it? It doesn't so matter. So just stay, no, on, stay okay. on your I am on. Right, I am you. on. They don't have any. I'm making, have any policy. I'm, I'm making emphasis. Let's sure. go to Sangle Me okay. right now. Sure. Over 1,500 is Houses. ready. Sure. Other about 3,500 is ongoing. Okay. That's housing. And we're talking about water. As of now, we have 20,000. 20 million gallons flowing. There's a reserve 20 million sure. that we is yet to go out. So when we say we'll do something, we have done something already, and we say change is happening, not change is coming. Again, when you come to youth employment, there are other, uh, what do they call it, uh, uh, modules that are going to be put up. There is this cocoa, whatever, to encourage young people to go into cocoa farming. Over 60 million uh, seedlings at the moment are being procured to encourage young men to go into uh, cocoa production. Um, if you go to the energy sector, you heard the president when he went to the uh, parliament to deliver the state of the nation. We've come so far. Sure. We still are not out of the woods. There are other, the um, uh, second car power, we're expecting it in the uh, coming months. Sure. When it's ready, we will all add up to the stock of energy. Sure. Uh, move to health. Madam said something about not only infrastructure without the other whatever. Okay. If you don't have the infrastructure, you can train as many people as possible. They will even find where to. But now we've created infrastructure in the history of this country. This is so the first time that. we are having, we are seeing some gadgets that we never had in our hospitals. We are seeing them all over the place. From Collibut, look at Rich. Rich pass through right. Rich Hospital. Thank you. you will see Unfortunately, it. Go to I'm University sorry. of Ghana. I'm you will see a 600-bed 
uh, project okay. underway. We, we've seen the green book, so, so, please, so thank you, thank you. There is so much sorry. evidence to show us, that they will take NBC. Us off right now. They will take we, us off we, if we don't. We, we are here thank you, thank, thank you very much. I'd like to say a very big thank you to you, uh, former member of parliament for Adenta, Mr. Duasarian, presidential staffer, Madam Rhoda Ayana, is former vice chair, CPP, and Michael K. Jr., who is celebrating his birthday. That's why you're in white. You celebrate your birthday with Michael OTAJ, by the way. So, congratulations. Yesterday was your flag bearer's birthday, and you is there a party? I'll love to follow him forever. Yeah, good, good. All right.